One of the reasons why I don't IRL stream to YouTube anymore is because I couldn't find a mobile text-to-speech app. IRL live streamers rely on TTS apps because it allows them to know or hear what's going on in chat without having to constantly look at their phone. Distractions like that can lead to accidents when you're out in the real world live stream. In today's video, we're going to cover my first and favorite TTS chat support app, IRL chat. I've been using it since the beginning of my IRL journey. Here's some of the things I really like about it. TTS, of course, is number one. You can also type in chat to run commands. The app can run in the background or while you're using another app. It has what they call browser sources, so you can do everything within the one app and more. Step one, download the app. Open the Google Play Store, search for IRL chat, and then tap to install it to your device. And if it's not available for your device, try these alternatives, real-time chat or stream buddy instead. Most of what I'm covering in this video should have similar equivalents in the other apps. And if you'd like me to make a video on them, let me know in the comments. Step two, explore the main interface. Let's have a look around before we log into Twitch. The main page is split in half. The top half is where you add browser sources, which we'll cover soon. The lower half is your chat window, where you'll see chat and can type a chat message. The speaker icon is to toggle the TTS on and off. Let's jump into the settings by tapping the cogwheel button on the bottom right. Step three, settings. At the very top, you can log into Twitch, which we'll do shortly. Same with the manage browser sources section. The tab height is pretty straightforward, have a play around with it to see what it does. For the chat section, I'd leave everything on the default values. In particular, keep chat alive in background should be set to on. It prevents the app from timing out or being closed from the close all apps menu. This is perfect for IRL because you basically want it on all the time until the stream is over. Remember to force quit the app to close it properly because it'll burn through your battery if you forget. For the voice section, text to speech chat should be set to on. I use ignore users for my bot, so I'm not being constantly bombarded with notification messages. And I use an exclamation mark for custom commands, so I put that in the section for ignore command prefix, so whenever a command is typed in, you won't hear commands from the TTS. If you'd like to adjust the TTS settings, there's a button for that as well. For me, I have options to change the speech rate, faster or slower, and the pitch higher or lower. I can tap on the play button to hear what it'll sound like, your phone might have different options for mine, so dig through the menus to see what's available and what works for you. For the other section, speaker disconnect workaround is set to on. This makes sure my Bluetooth headset doesn't turn off by playing a silent audio clip every five minutes. For themes, you can choose follow system settings, dark mode or light mode. And if you prefer light mode, please unsubscribe immediately. I'm kidding, or am I? With that out of the way, let's log into Twitch and then jump into the next topic. Step four, browser sources. Along the bottom, you have options to import and export a list of browser sources, which is really helpful when you've got multiple devices or when you're upgrading from one device to another. But we'll first get into adding a new browser source by tapping the big pink button. Enter a name and a URL for your new browser source. The enable toggle button allows you to turn a browser source on or off, which is great for testing a new source without deleting the old one. I usually have auto reload on reconnect set on, and when you're done, tap the add browser source button. Importing and exporting browser sources is pretty straightforward, but one thing I wanted to mention is that my Samsung shows my OneDrive as an import location, but not as an option for exporting. So I'm currently unable to export my browser source list directly from IRL chat to my OneDrive. Maybe it'll come in a future update. For now, my Samsung has a My Files app where I can share the file to my OneDrive from there. Let's go through some of the ways I use browser sources. To start and stop the stream on my home computer running OBS, to change scenes within OBS, to activate alerts and channel point redemptions at the press of a button, to preview my live stream, to see if I'm actually live or if there's a problem without leaving the IRL chat app, to check my stream activities, subs, raids, follows, etc., and to update my stream title, run commands, and to raid another channel. I can do all of those things and more with just four browser source tabs. The first tab is linked to my streamer bot at home. Anything I can do there, I can do here as well. It'll run on almost anything with a browser, and in our case, a browser source. To add a streamer bot deck as a browser source, log in to the streamer bot website with your Discord. Navigate to your decks, select one, and copy the URL link from the launch deck button. Paste that into the URL of your browser source, give it a title, set enable to on, and save. I'll be covering the streamer bot side of things in a future video, 
subscribe and stay tuned for that one. For the second tab, I've got a preview of my live stream. I've set it up this way because I usually start the stream with the first tab and jump to the second tab to make sure I'm actually live on Twitch. Add a new browser source, name it Twitch, and then add the URL from the description. Just change the channel name to yours. For the third tab, I'm using my activity feed from Stream Elements, which shows subs, raids, follows, and more. Log into your Stream Elements dashboard for Twitch and navigate to the activity feed section where you'll find a button for a pop-out version of your activity feed. Copy the URL and paste this into a new browser source. I've also added the link for this one in the description. And finally, for our fourth tab, I've added the quick actions pop-out menu for my Twitch dashboard. This is where you can add shortcuts or quick actions to save a clip, edit a stream in, information, run ads, and most importantly, to raid a channel. With one tap, the raid a channel button will show the first five or so channels you're currently following and who are also live. Tap one of those channels to start a raid and the rest is pretty much the same like streaming at home. Okay, log into your creator dashboard on Twitch and navigate to the stream manager section. Your layout is probably different from mine, but there should be a quick actions menu there somewhere. Click on the burger menu for quick actions and then select pop out quick actions from the list. Copy the URL and paste this into a new browser source. Step five, putting it all together. Let's go back to the main page and go through how I use IRL chat from the yeah, beginning. Yeah. Open IRL chat, it usually takes a few seconds for everything to load. When we're good, we're already on the first browser tab, ready to tap the start stream oh, button. I usually type something first, so I know the TTS is working. Then I scroll over to the second tab to check we're live on Twitch. Back to the first tab again for the rest of the stream. Near the end, I might check the activity feed to acknowledge anyone who's subbed, followed, or rated, and then over to the fourth tab to activate a raid to someone I'm following. Back to the first tab where I tap the end stream button, which tells OBS True. back home to change scenes and then end the stream to Twitch. And that's how I'm currently using IRL chat. What do you think? Got any suggestions or unique ways you're using it? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. See you next time.